Okay, chapter 18, circuit and circuit elements. So first of all, before we start looking at specific types of circuits, we have to understand the diagramming of the electric circuit. So what we do is, instead of actually drawing electrical components, so here's, for example, some electrical components. And here are resistors that we've already used. We're going to do another lab with resistors and capacitors and other different types of, here we see some more resistors. Um, <clears throat> instead of drawing a picture, because we're all not great artists, this is some more pictures, the main part of a computer. I'm not sorry, pictures. Here's some more, um, here's a battery. And <clears throat> Everyone can't draw something the same. So when we want to look at a schematic drawing showing the wiring for anything, what we do is we use symbols. So with just a straight line like this, this represents a conductor. So that would be like a wire. This is a switch to turn something on and off, almost like the light switch. This is a resistor. So we've looked at resistors, and this is one of the symbols that we're going to be using often in this chapter to look at different types of circuits. Here's a capacitor and inductor. There's many more than these. These are just the ones that are in your book. Okay, this means something's connected to ground. Now what happens is circuits can become complex. So what happens is wires are going to cross, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's a connection. So if there's an electrical connection, there's a dot, and if there's no electrical connection, it just looks like this. This is the symbol for a battery. And then some other ones, we have a lamp, a DC generator, a voltmeter, and an ammeter. Okay? And again, these are just a few of many electric circuit symbols, but these are the ones that we're going to need to know for this class. <coughs> so an electric circuit, circuit is a path along which electrons can flow. So again, we said with the switch, if the circuit is closed, the current can flow. Because, again, there needs to be a path for it to flow. So if I had an electrical circuit and the switch was open, there's not a closed path for it to flow. If the switch was like this and it was closed, now there's a loop and there's a path for it to go so it can flow. So think about current being the flow of electrons and there needs to be a path for it to flow. When we do circuits, if you look at it, analogous to water flowing through a pipe. It helps us to conceptualize and understand. And that's going to help us for doing different types of circuits. Series and parallel are somewhat simple, but once we get to complex circuits, using that analogy of water, I think, helps. All right, today we're just going to do um, series. So a load, a device that uses energy, and then it's the switch. We talked about that in the last chapter. Electromotive force, this is abbreviated EMF, and this is what pushes um, the electricity through. So today we're going to do a series circuit. In a series circuit, this is one where there's only one path for it to go. So the current only has one way to go, and that's it. And you need to remember that the current is the same throughout a series circuit. Okay. Now, here we're going to use something. There's something called the effective resistance. So what this means is that when I have different resistors, and I have, let's say, three, for example, if I had one, if I had three resistors and I wanted to see what would be one equivalent resistance or one equivalent resistor to the three that are in series. Different books use different terminology. So that's why here I put three different things. I put REFF for effective because sometimes you'll see the equivalent resistance referred to, referred to as the effective resistance. Sometimes they use REQ for equivalent and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use RT, and I'm going to use T for total because it makes it simpler for us. But the total is actually the equivalent resistance. Okay. Now, in series, the voltages add up. So what happens is when we have a series circuit, we have the current coming out of the battery, 
and then there's going to be a voltage drop across each resistor. So the voltages add up, and then the resistances add up. Now what we're going to do is, after I go over the example problem, we're going to look at a chart that you're going to have to memorize for series. And then next class we're going to do parallel. So here's an example. Whenever we're doing circuits, if you have a problem like this that's in words and there's no diagram, you are going to draw a schematic diagram. On our homework tonight, you're going to be required to draw a schematic diagram for every single problem. The schematic diagram is going to help you to visualize and it's going to help you to solve the problem. When we get to more complex circuits where we have series and parallel combinations and we have to simplify them in order to analyze the circuit, by drawing schematic diagrams and drawing intermediate schematic diagrams, it's going to be very simple. <coughs> All right, so this problem says four 15-ohm resistors are connected in series. Here's my battery. So the current is coming out of the battery. So this is my total current. Now, pretend that this wire is a pipe with water in it. When the current is coming out or the water is flowing, you see how it's going through here, through here, through here, through here. You see how there's only one way for it to flow? There's only one path to take. So when there's only one path to take, that means the current is the same. So that makes sense. So that's why the current is the same throughout. Now this one I have four resistors that happen to be the same. So first it says what is the current in the system, in the circuit? What we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying Ohm's law over and over and over again throughout the circuit. We can do it for the entire circuit or we can do it for part of the circuit. Okay. Now if I want to apply Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, if I want to apply it for the entire circuit, I will say VT is equal to IT times RT. So T stands for total. So the total current is going to be equal to the total voltage of the battery over the total resistance. The problem is, do I have the total resistance? No. I only have this. So again, when we draw a schematic diagram, we're going to label these R1, R2, R3 and R4. So all I want to find the total resistance. The total resistance is R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, which ends up being 15, 15, 15, and 15 is 60. Then when I want to find the total current, the total current is the total voltage divided by the total resistance. So I can apply Ohm's law for part of a circuit, or I can apply Ohm's law uh, Again, for the whole circuit or just one part of it. So we're going to be using Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, over and over again. So 30 divided by 60 is 0.5. But that's the same current going through here, 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 and here. Now, what the great thing about circuits is, it's kind of like carrying units and canceling 